Hi peaches, it's Shelva. Welcome back to my channel and thank you for clicking on another video. Settle in, settle in, because today we're continuing with our weekly series of fishing for a-holes. That is right. We're going to take a look at the subreddit, Am I the A-hole? Because it's a little bit of juicy drama. We can hopefully help some people out and we can also expand our own mindsets along the way. Just before we dive deep into the a-holes though, I'd love to give a shout out to today's video sponsor, Pride Counseling. Pride season is nearly upon us. I'm so excited. I also appreciate it can be a tricky time for people if you may be on out yet. If all the beautiful rainbows and love and joy and wholesomeness in the world maybe has a secondary effect of making you think about your identity and you think maybe you could use some help figuring out the questions that it might bring up, it is perfectly okay for you to feel like you need to speak to someone. And if you're an LGBT cutie and you want to talk to someone about how you're feeling, then Pride Counseling could be a great resource for you. They provide online therapy specifically for the LGBT plus community. I have used them for a long time and have had a great experience. I mean, as great as therapy can be because, you know, therapy is really friggin' difficult, but I feel like I'm a much better person having gone through that. All Pride Counselling therapists are LGBT plus friendly, which is a huge thing to not have to worry about. You just pop online, answer a few questions about your needs and you're matched to a therapist, and if for whatever reason you don't like them, because finding a therapist can be hard, you need good chemistry, and on Pride Counselling you can switch just like that, free of charge, it's very quick and easy. My favourite thing about the service is you can talk to your therapist however and whenever you feel comfortable. If you want to do that via text messages, phone calls, video calls, or online chat, it is totally up to you. And if you're thinking, damn, it sounds good, but I can't quite afford it, that's fine. Just know that Pride Counseling also offer financial aid that you can apply for. If you'd like to find out more or potentially sign up, you can take a look at my link downstairs in the description box, pridecounseling.com forward slash Shaba. You can also use this gorgeous little QR code and either way you'll get 10% off your first month. All right, my lovely, shall we dive deep into the assholes? Let's go. Am I the asshole for getting mad at my coworker who asked me, why are you so quiet? Okay, so I'm not a very talkative person at all. I hate small talk, I don't like talking about myself, and I'm not particularly interested in other people either. An introvert. I hear you. Or more to the point, I don't hear you and that's okay. It seems like every workplace I go to, people think that I'm weird because I don't socialise. I'm not rude or anything, I just don't go out of my way to have conversations with people. I'd rather listen to my music. That's fine. I see how it's different to the norm, especially because like workplace culture is such a big thing, but you're not wrong for doing that. One day, when I'm on my lunch break, one of my co-workers comes up and randomly asks me, whilst I'm minding my own business, why are you always so quiet? quiet man. You never say nothing. I immediately got so pissed off. Without thinking, I responded, same reason why you're so loud. And he was all like, yo man, relax. It was just a question. I feel so odd saying things like, yo man, relax, but there you go. Then I said, is there a problem or... And he said, all right, never mind, man, I'll leave you alone. And that was that. I feel like I was unnecessarily rude here, but it's just because I'm so sick of people asking me that question and making it sound like an accusation. It's like being quiet is a bad thing to them or it means there's something wrong with me. I know I could have just said something like, oh, I don't know, or it's just the way I am, but why should I have to explain why I'm minding my own business? Still, I took out my anger on this guy when it really wasn't about him. It was the fact that I've been asked the same stupid question so many times that annoyed me. Am I the asshole? If I'm the asshole, should I apologise? Number one, brownie points to this OP for the level of self-reflection. I see you trying to put yourself in the position of other people, and I think that's such an important, valuable skill to do, and I love that. So yay you. Having said that, yes, you're the asshole, <laughs> in my opinion. And hear me out, not for being an introvert. You are so welcome to listen to your own music and do your own thing and not speak to anyone. You are there, you're getting paid to do the job, not to be friendly to other people. All of this is true. And on top of this, society works in a way where people just talk to each other. In the workplace, in the office, it's a thing. And in my opinion, it's not a bad thing. I don't think you're thinking it's a bad thing either. You're just saying you don't want to be a part of that. And that's totally cool. But you can't be mad at someone who is just very innocently asking you or trying to instigate conversation because he might think that you want to talk and he's going out of his way to be friendly to involve you. You know? Nothing about that interaction that you've reported sounded bad on his part, but you launched at him and were like, ah, I am so upset with you. How dare you ask me a question that is very, very normal. I'm having a bit of a brain fart and I'm going to share it with you. In determining if something is right or wrong, what my brain does is take the, the formula out and it applies it to different scenarios. And I think it's important to do that to sort of sanity check that your formula is correct. And my head in this position was like, oh, but hang on, Sharba. If this were about other things that we discuss here on this channel, oh, as a brown person, why do you smell like that? Oh, as someone with a trans partner, let me ask you all these invasive questions. How come it's okay to clap back at those people and be like, no, how dare you invite conversation? But in this instance, it's okay. And I think the reason why in this scenario, OP is the asshole, but in the other scenarios I'm talking about, it's not, is because it's objectively reasonable to ask someone, hey, you don't speak very much. Are you okay? Like you want to chat? It's just a kind thing 
to invite. It's not hugely invasive and it's not to do with marginalised characteristics that make people feel uncomfortable that's coming from a place of entitlement because they feel like they're better off than you in some way. It is totally fine for you to not want to speak to anyone but I think if people then ask you because they're trying to be nice and integrate you in conversation you need to be prepared to say thank you but I just don't like speaking to people. I really like listening to my music and I'm totally fine with that. And as long as the other person's reaction is nothing but respect to what you've shared there's no problem. I feel like this might be a controversial one. Do you agree with me peaches? Let's see about other people have to say. A fellow quiet person here, you are the asshole. let me explain. People have different reasons to be quiet. Whilst you prefer it, everyone's not like that. Some people are shy, they have self-esteem issues or other problems. You don't know the intentions of the co-workers. You had no reason to think that they were malicious, yet you assumed it was an accusation and therefore you answered rudely. You don't owe friendship or explanation to your co-worker, but how hard is it to assume that they were friendly, smile and politely say, I just prefer it this way, instead of creating further tension? I agree. And I love that point. You don't owe friendship and you don't owe explanations, but freedom of speech doesn't mean freedom of consequences. You are very within your right to say, go away, don't speak to me, how dare you speak to me? But then you can't be mad if other people don't react well to that. <laughs> I personally would apologise, not some big grand gesture, but to be like, sorry, by the way, I didn't mean to shout at you. You can even say I'm a really introverted person, I get asked this question a lot, and I'm sorry to have taken it out on you. Opie's actually responded and said, fair enough, if anything I only reinforce the belief that quiet people have something wrong with them. I love this introflection! Did I just make up a word? I don't think introflection is a thing, but it's now a thing! I I love this introflection. What was I trying to say? I don't know. Let's move on. Am I the asshole for taking a poop in the hotel bathroom? I'm a 28 year old woman and my friend Jamie, 27 year old woman, and I took a trip together recently. We shared a hotel room for the trip. Jamie told me that she thinks it's disgusting and disrespectful to do a number two in the hotel room bathroom. Jamie thinks that the hotel bathroom, when sharing with another person, should be used for a number one only. Where did Jamie learn this from? I don't think toilets go, no, no, do not open that orifice here. Jamie requested that any number twos be taken in the lobby bathroom. I told Jamie that I'm a germaphobe. I don't like public bathrooms, so I'll do my best to make sure the hotel room bathroom doesn't smell. If I need to go for a number two, I'm not putting shoes on and hiking down to the lobby when there's a perfectly good fan in the room bathroom. I'll even buy spray if needed. I realise that the room bathroom is still probably not the cleanest, but in my mind it's certainly less used than the lobby bathroom, babe. I agree. I really dislike having to go to public toilets. I'll only do it if I absolutely have to. But hotel bathrooms hit different. When you're at a hotel, the hotel becomes your temporary home, you can tell if it's clean and more importantly you know the people using it since it's last had a deep clean and uh, that's very important to me so I, I feel you. After a bit of back and forth we couldn't come to an agreement. She continues to go to the lobby to take and I continue to use the hotel room bathroom. That sounds like a very good resolution to me. Uh, my only question is who has paid for this trip? Because if Jamie's paid for it and was like no I don't want you to use the bathroom that's the only thing that I can like maybe understand. I mean not understand but respect. Mm. She isn't thrilled, she thinks I'm being disrespectful. Again, I offered to buy spray. Am I the asshole? This is so dumb. It's a bathroom. It's meant for a number two. I don't see how I'm being disrespectful. That's part of the territory when you share a hotel room to save money, you deal with shit like this. Pun intended. And there is an edit here to say, yes, we split costs down the middle. We both paid 50-50. Look, if you have come to an agreement that you're going to share a hotel room, that means you share the amenities. The toilet is there to do things that a toilet expects you to do. It welcomes poop. Give it the poop. If you have paid 50-50, you are just as entitled to use that toilet to do normal toilet things as your friend Jamie is. And if your friend Jamie doesn't like that and wants to go and use the lobby bathroom, let them do that. That is their decision. But they cannot be mad at you for using a hotel bathroom as the good lord intended it to be used. The good lord didn't make toilets. Who did? As the good Thomas Edison. Oh, God. He just invented so many things. I don't know who made the toilet, okay? In all seriousness, it sounds like your friend Jamie has different expectations to the norm. And if that happens, you need to communicate that to someone if you're going to share a room with them. If they were so particular about this, they shouldn't have agreed to share a room with you in the first place and they should have forked out the money to get a different one and you could have forked out the money to get a different one and you could have pooped in peace. So no. You're not the asshole. <laughs> not the asshole. Her phobia is her issue. There are bathrooms and hotel rooms for a reason. It was nice of you to bring air freshener. Badoom, sploosh. <laughs> I don't know what the problem is. Sometimes it happens. I see you, Reddit. I see you with the puns. Bring them. Am I the kind of person that loves poop humor in that way? Absolutely. Should we do one more? Am I the asshole for not changing the way things are? 
I have a daughter, 14. I'm dating Laurel, who has three kids, a 16 year old girl, a 15 year old boy, and an 11 year old boy. When we first started dating, she didn't tell me that she had three kids. That would have been a deal breaker for me, but by the time I found out about her kids, I already had feelings for her. However, I explained to her that I never had any intentions of having more kids, and I won't let our relationship affect my daughter's life. And by that, I mean that even if we get married, she'll be responsible for her own kids, and I'll be responsible for mine, because I can't afford to treat three more kids the same as my daughter. And Laurel agreed. Ooh, before we read on, I feel uneasy that it got to the point where you have feelings for this person because it takes time. Unless you fell head over heels in like the first couple dates, someone should be telling you about their kids before it gets to that stage where you can genuinely have like deep, deep feelings for someone. I also think that you're not in the wrong for not wanting more kids. You hear about it so many times where people come together hoping that someone will change, but that's such a fundamental issue of life. If someone wants a big family, someone doesn't want a family, you're clearly not gonna work together. And there is no point in wasting time in a relationship that's just ultimately going to end because you don't have the same values in that way. And it's certainly not okay to force someone else to change their mind. So because of that, I just can't help but feel bad for OP. However, you OP then made the decision to continue being in a relationship with someone despite the fact that they have extra kids, which you know you didn't want, and then said, cool, but for the benefit of us, our kids are gonna be treated differently. And that's something that I have a big problem with. Bringing two families together, blended families, you've seen the movie Blended on Netflix, it's like one of the most beautiful movies I've ever seen, it's so cute. Bringing two families together is a difficult thing to do. And even if you're like, hey, well, I have my kid and you have your kids, you can't see it that way. If you guys are married, you're gonna be a family unit. And especially with kids this young, right? It's not like they're older, they're independent, they've flown the nest, they've set up their own lives. No, they're still gonna be living with you for quite some time. Think. About about the tension that's gonna put on your one child who's being treated one way and these other three kids. That's not gonna be a nice environment for them. That's not a great sense of equality. That's not equal parenting and step parenting. Everything about that screams alarm bells to me that it's not gonna work. And I'm never one to jump to the conclusion of, hey, you should break up. This does seem like an issue where maybe you should have just ended the relationship if you're not willing to take on kids and treat them equally to other kids. Because otherwise I can just see it being bad for all people. Let's keep reading. Now we've moved in together because of her financial issues. We had to, otherwise she'd be homeless. Our problems have started. I gave the guest room to her kids, but she thinks I should let her daughter share with my daughter. So it's a 14 year old with a 16 year old. Mm. I said, absolutely not. My daughter hates sharing and I won't force her. That's fair. And that's your kid. And you're allowed to say that. Also, I'm thinking that's not going to be fantastic for her 16 year old who at the age of 16, you know, you want some more autonomy and they're already joining a family. Sharing a room is a really intimate thing. I, I appreciate it though. Financial resources means that you can't. It's tricky. She thinks I'm an asshole and that I should at least give the smallest room to my daughter and let the others share her room, which again, I don't want to. And this is what I mean, you can't treat, like imagine how your daughter's gonna be treated by those other three kids. This is a really tricky one. I can't see it working and I'm gonna say everybody sucks here. Apart from the kids, the kids obviously have no choice in this. How long have you been together? How long did you know about the kids? Oh wow, so it seems that he found out about the kids and continued to date this person for eight years. That is a really long time. Yes, I definitely think this is an everybody sucks here moment. I think what's happening is you you are now seeing the practical reasons of the next steps of the relationship where you're moving together, how it's not working, and ultimately the way that you are acting, which you're entitled to do, to not want to have a larger family, but the way that you are acting is at detriment to not only your kid, but also the person that you love and their kids, and that's not okay. We can't harm kids in relationship scenarios. As harsh as it sounds to say, you should have broken up eight years ago when you knew that this was something that you were holding steadfast on. It's not like it's just been a couple weeks, like eight years is a long time to have thought about this, and for you to be still so strong in that conviction, which you are entitled to do, you just can't be treating kids that way. And Laurel should have told you beforehand. You shouldn't have gotten into a position where you have developed developed feelings and now have had them move in with you knowing that her kids would be treated differently and agreeing to that. No. There's a difference between not treating her kids as though they were his own biological kids versus acting as if her kids are pets that he can just refuse to take on walks and feed once in a while. Children are human beings. Him insisting on not being a parent figure yet moving in together is a stupid move that puts those kids in a crappy situation. You're the arsehole. As soon as she said she had kids and you knew that they were a deal breaker, you should have left. You can't set boundaries like that about children in your home and you're grown enough to know that. I agree, but I also think that the mum has responsibility to look after her kids, so I stick with my everybody sucks here. Maybe you should have ended the relationship when you found out 
out about the kids and not continue to stay here for eight years? Oh, peaches. Let me know your thoughts on this one. Get your little peachy butts downstairs into the comments section. We can have a little chat. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you would like to. It super duper helps me out and it's totally free. Just press a little button down there. And also down there, you'll find the link to Pride Counseling if you think it might be a useful resource for you. For now, I will love you and leave you. Be kind and have a great day.